Welcome to this special series with some special people in which we turn our spotlight on the remarkable winners of Smart India Hackathon 2023. A prestigious competition that showcases the genius of young minds in solving real-world challenges through technology. In this program, we will hear from the winners themselves, learning about the challenges they faced, the inspiration behind the solution and the impact they hope to achieve. First in the series is Sam Varghese and his team. So let's hear it from the man himself and the people associated with him. Hi Sam, how are you doing? Hello sir, I'm fine. So good to have you guys on this show, uh, the first episode for this particular series. And good to see you those, you know, bright uh, faces, uh, which are the faces of winners. So many congratulations to begin with. And uh, thank you so much, sir. I would request you to, you know, kind of tell us something about you and your team so that, you know, we get to know you better before we start, you know, taking more of the information from you. Sure. So my name is Sam Burgess and our team is from NMIMS Indore. So we are from Madhya Pradesh state and the problem statement where we worked on is SIH 1515. I am in MBA tech branch pursuing computer engineering and I'm also an intern at Maharashtra Police Cyber Center Quarters. Now I would like to request Suhani to introduce herself. Hello, I'm Suhani Kandewar. I'm in second year and pursuing B.Tech in computer engineering. Uh, hello sir, uh, my name is Arun Jain and uh, uh, I have also been a part of the previous hackathon which was Kavach hackathon in which uh, the team was again led by uh, Sam Burghese and I am currently pursuing B.Tech uh, from NMIMS. I am in second year. My name is Priyan Shabkar, first year entry of B.Tech. So good to know you guys, I mean you have been a uh, Pro at this, even uh, Kavach was your playground once. Uh, wonderful to hear that. So Sam, uh, first of all, let me let me know a bit about your team. How did you get together? Like, were you studying together, or it was a common interest, or what brought you together as a team to you know participate in the hackathon? Yeah. So my team, uh, we are from the same university, and we are very passionate about hardware and software. Things. So. Yeah, like I know Flutter, many of them are, have their expertise in AI level, in application development and a lot of these fields. So yeah, we are very passionate about solving the problems and that is why we took part in Smart India Hackathon. We formed a group together. That's how. So everyone had their expertise individually and uh, we come together and uh, some is for the ideation part, some is, uh, expert, some is expert in back end, some in front end and that is how we came together. and. Uh, Okay, so the problem that you chose was real-time parking management system. So how critical yes, this issue is according to you and why does it really need a solution? Can we live without it? Can we do without it or no? Many times people park on street, right? Now whenever they park on street, it leads to street congestion. Now because of this, it leads to longer waiting times. People have to wait for a long time in order to reach their destination. Now, this is a very big issue for smart city developments and for cities like Mumbai, Madhya Pradesh, etc. Now, this is the problem where we actually worked on. Parking space cannot be increased. We have to utilize the ones which is available to us right now. And that is what we have done. We have utilized available parking space to its fullest using a combination of hardware as well as software. So, we are all based in Indore. So, according to Indore, uh, there was a recent publication in Times of India and Derek Baskar about the illegal parking done. Uh, they uploaded a statistic that more than 2 lakh people have been fined for illegal parking. This tells us how big of an issue this already is. And uh, because of illegal parking, traffic congestion takes place and air and noise pollution takes place. And as there are limited parking spots, so to solve this problem, we have to implement a smart solution so that we can optimize these parking spaces and provide reservation of these parking spaces with a hassle-free experience. So there is going to be a paucity of parking space always. In fact, this paucity will, you know, uh, keep increasing by the passage of time. So how does one solve this puzzle? So that will be very interesting to know and understand from you. How did you crack this particular puzzle? How were you able to, you know, create this kind of a management system? Yes, sir. So first and foremost, people park many a times illegally, right? So what we have done is, we are utilizing the existing CCTV cameras of government and these cameras, they will send their footage to our AIML model. 
Now through AIML model, we'll be having a constant supervision on the uh, parking space, right? So whenever somebody parks illegally, then suddenly this uh, application will send alert to the officials that, okay, this is, uh, this is the particular car, it has parked illegally. Now, because of this, it is leading to congestion, long waiting times and all of these things, right? Secondly, we are asking the users to reserve their parking spot even before they come. Okay, so because of this, users would be able to reserve their parking spot prior to, uh, prior to coming there. Suppose if I want to park my space at 4 to 5 p.m., okay, then I'll exactly come to know what is the congestion at that particular time? How many people have already reserved their parking spot? Okay, now, if this parking spot is not available, then our application will tell the user, okay, so don't come at four to five because the parking spots are already filled. You do one thing, you come from five to 6 p.m. At that time, parking spaces would be vacant. So what are we doing here actually? We are telling the users to come at a specific, uh, we are actually dividing the crowd based on time as well as based on location. Okay, so this is how we are utilizing the existing parking spaces. So instead of simply creating a law, creating a crowd there, we are actually telling the users, okay, come from this time to this time, you'll find a parking space there. So you are basically- are producing the congestion on the streets. So you're basically sending out directives to the users or potential users. So to be able exactly. to use, uh, send out these directives, what is the kind of data that you're collecting and how are you collecting that? What are your sources for, you know, collection of all those data which enable you to, you know, uh, send out these uh, directives or whatever suggestions you may say? Okay, so the data that we are collecting, first and foremost, it is from the CCTV footage itself. So we will be accessing the CCTV cameras of government. We are utilizing only the existing infrastructure. We are not introducing something else which leads to a lot of burden, a lot of financial investment or something, we are utilizing the existing systems. Okay, so what this camera will do is, it will send its CCTV footage to our AIML model. Now, the AIML model will constantly see the available parking space. It will check whether the parking space is congested or not, whether there is an available parking space or not. So what it will do, it will send the, uh, send the time as well as the congestion data to our cloud file, cloud database. So this is how it's actually done. So what exactly happens when that CCTV footage data goes to your, you know, AI based backend, I would say. Uh, yeah, so what happens is our CCTV footage, uh, the footage we're getting from the, the, the real time uh, footage we're getting. So with the help of our AI ML model, we are able to keep the track of the number of vehicles in the particular area. Now to solve uh, this problem of uh, where to allot the parking, as in because we have a street for example, so maybe 70% of that particular street, let's say illegal and the remaining 30% is illegal. So how exactly does a user know or the admin knows he, where to park exactly? So our uh, application allows the parking space uh, to divide the space into groups and so each group has the track of the number of vehicles. So what will happen actually is the admin will mark the legal parking space, right? Because all because the whole street is not obviously a legal parking space. So the admin will actually mark the legal parking space. Now our AIML model will supervise that a parking space. It will see if that space has been completely filled or not. If uh, suppose a space had a capacity of five vehicles, but only three have come, then suddenly our AI ML model will alert the officials. Okay, see, two more vehicles can come here. So the user can park here. So that is how we are actually utilizing the existing parking space. Sam, uh, let's, uh, can we really have uh, some kind of a demonstration which uh, we, you know, you know, makes us see exactly what's happening. Instead of, you know, sure. trying to understand through words, can we see it through visuals or through, you know, actual kind of a prototype which you might have developed? Yes, sir. We have developed a mobile application. Now this application will also be also be compatible for Android, iOS, Windows, as well as Linux. So let us share our screen first. This is the application which we have created for our problem statement. So uh, here, firstly, we are entering the username. Then we are entering the password. After that, we need to register our vehicle number. So let's take a random vehicle number for now. Yeah. Yes. And, and after that, we are submitting it. 
So this is a page where we can reserve a spot for our vehicle. So firstly, we need to enter the timing from which duration we need to uh, reserve a spot. So it is automatically taking a time of one hour, which is 2.30 to 3.32. We can also change it if we want to extend the time. After that, we need to uh, select the destination. So uh, here, right now, I'm selecting NMIMS Indoor only. After that, uh, we need to select the vehicle type, whether it is a car or a bike, uh, motorcycle. So after that, we'll submit this. And uh, here we have some groups uh, on which we can reserve our spot. So it also shows how much spot is occupied and how much spot is uh, not occupied. So we'll enter here in and we'll book a spot here. So firstly, it will give us the amount which we need to pay. So it is showing here 20 rupees, which we have set it uh, by default. And we can change it later on. And we have also applied dynamic pricing here. So we can change it. After that, uh, it is showing that our spot is successfully reserved and the cost we need to pay is 49 rupees. Okay, so as you can see, while she was reserving her spot, she was actually able to see how much of the particular parking spot is available and how much is not available. So users, even without going to the particular parking space physically, they can come to know that, okay, 60% of the spot is already occupied or 100% of it is occupied. So let me change my time duration so that the particular street does not get over -consisted. So this is how we are managing the traffic. We are managing the existing parking spaces. So I think it is not only about managing traffic and parking spaces. Another thing that comes to mind is, you know, from an era of uh, having, you know, advanced booking for cinemas, we are now moving to an era of where we can have advanced booking of parking slots, right? So probably yes, that is an additional thing that you're offering to the potential customers. Yes, this is an additional thing that we are uh, offering. Moreover, we have also set a dynamic pricing so while using this application, the officials can earn money. The shopkeepers can earn money. They can charge for the parking space that they are providing. So this becomes an additional source of revenue for them. And everything is working on a real time basis. So everything gets registered in the app as well at the same time. Okay, now coming to the next important question. Uh, in terms of competition, where do you stand? Are there any similar platforms available in and around uh, your area or in this country or in the world, uh, what is this comparable with? Yes, sir. So there are a few, uh, few competitions. Like recently, we uh, saw a news about Ujjain. So in Ujjain, they're implementing a similar parking, uh, parking space management system. But majority of the parking space uh, management systems, they do not use computer vision. So they only use uh, the application. Moreover, they are also more oriented towards dedicated parking space, not the street parking space. For smart city development, streets parking and street parking space is what's more important, not the dedicated one, like uh, like the parking space that is available in malls or in colleges. They are not an issue for us. For the ministry, the main issue is whenever people park on street or on the road. So that is our main issue, and we have all, we have solved it in a better way by integrating computer vision, hardware, software, and whatnot. Uh, and uh, the USP of our application is that there is very less human intervention. As in, we don't need many people for our program to work. As we see that in a lot of parking spaces, we have two to three people who are working there, who are able, who are helping the people to park their spaces. Some officers who are there to find uh, if some, uh, or towing vehicles, for example. So our application requires a very, very less uh, human intervention and it can give results very efficiently. It also has an embedded map, as you can see. So it will guide the user to the exact parking spot. So uh, we've spoken about the competition and you say that there is competition right now, but you are a little ahead of them because of certain features and certain functions. So, but uh, tell me one thing, what stops them to upgrade themselves and bring themselves to your level and be a really stiff competition for you? So is that uh, something which is possible, which might happen in the future? And if that happens, how do you plan to you know, fight that? Okay, that is actually a very good question. So right now we are using very advanced uh, AIML models. 
Okay, so and moreover, we are using the existing infrastructure. Our competitor are not using the existing infrastructure. It requires a lot of investment to set them up, right? So that is how we are ahead of them because we are actually using the existing infrastructure, not bringing something new to the table. So it's very affordable for everybody, and moreover, it also offers a source of revenue that is very important for all the shopkeepers. Means the shopkeepers won't directly use our application if uh, if we force them to. Right? They will use our application if they also get some benefit from it. So, providing them an additional source of revenue, providing them suppose even half a lakh of money, it will motivate them a lot to set this set up this technology. What are the future plans? What? Where do you take this from? This particular step. What is the next step for this? Yes, sir. So we are planning to create a startup. so that we can extend this project and make it see the light of the day moreover we are also in touch with the mayor's office with the mayor of indore we are also in touch with his office and yeah soon we will try to implement it in a few regions of indore and we'll start to scale it up so that this application will be used for the entire city and uh, have you figured out the funding part of it uh, will it be bootstrapping or you're looking at some kind of a seed capital or you know something uh, to that nature so uh, our college uh, nmms uh, we have some uh, funders and investors uh, who found our uh, idea very good and uh, uh, they are the ones who are going to link us with the mess and uh, they they have assured us that funding won't be a very big problem and also uh, a very additional benefit is that we don't require a a, a very large amount of money we can basically make our application work very efficiently uh, in very less amount of money so uh, funding uh, is won't be a very uh, big problem and it 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 would be solved more above we have already uh, been rewarded with a 1 lakh cash prize we'll be using it for our application for, uh, development our application, yes of course that prize money is going to come handy definitely i can uh, i can understand that yes sir it's well deserved one and uh, now uh, sam and team uh, Uh, talking about the business plans and you know taking this idea forward so tell me in kind of bullet points what all do we require at this particular moment to succeed or to take this forward or to make this a commercial uh, viability okay so first would be the expertise of the people who are working at a very high level and who have basically the technical experience so that our application actually works in the real time scenario uh first would be uh, taking that help secondly would be the funding part i guess uh for the uh, the money and uh, and then we might require access to cctv footage obvi- yeah. obviously so yeah that is very crucial thing for us accessing the data accessing the data that our existing infrastructure is collecting and yeah and last one is that we might need access to a cloud infrastructure a cloud database as well so that our application will run on cloud it will store its data on cloud so that it is accessible for the whole city or the whole state so i presume that you must be working on these things right now yes sir yes sir we, we are in right now contact with uh, some people okay so uh, if i talk about any timeline kind of a thing so in how many months or years or whatever time frame do you think this idea can be turned into reality so it might need us 6 months at least to uh, start up, start the phase 1 of our project so in the phase 1 of our project we will be targeting on a small location probably our, our university parking area or the nearby streets okay or, uh, or, a, or a square or something we'll start by that the first phase would be testing it in a small case scenario and uh, the all the problems which are going or the inconsistencies which are going to come we are going to be solving that so that we are ready to take it on a, a little big level yes sir so at least 6 months to figure out the existing technical things that are currently going on in indore in our state okay and then we'll try to Prove it. We'll try to uh, launch our phase one. We'll try to uh, implement it on our area. So, guys, there it is. Uh, in the next six months, we can expect a very smart real-time parking space management system coming into place. So, that's the power of ideas. That's the power of you know innovation. That's the power of Smart India Hackathon. You know, bringing up these uh, wonderful young minds and their ideas and uh, working on those. 
so sam and team uh, thank you so much for joining us today and thank we you wish you all the best you. and uh, we hope that uh, within 6 months you actually will be able to start this project and thereafter uh, you will not look back and uh, take this thing to multiple cities across the country and you will be a name uh, which will be well known in this particular space and uh, people will remember you for you know solving this huge problem that our country faces and uh, we wish you all the very best sam and all the team members thank you so much for thank joining thank you so much sir thank you so that was sam and his team making a difference there through smart india hackathon so that is all for now we'll be back with an array of innovation and brilliance as we showcase the smart india hackathon winners who are not just shaping the future but also contributing to building a smarter and more technologically advanced india stay tuned for more episodes filled with creativity and spirit of innovation see you